Hey guys, for today's Society Sucks podcast video YouTube edition, we wanted to introduce it because we had, well, we had some technical difficulties <laughs> going on, so you won't be seeing any of us in the footage, but you will be seeing our guest. So, so you know, we apologize for this, and we just want to let y'all know so y'all understand what's happening. Yeah. But like I said, we appreciate you guys. Go ahead, like, comment, and subscribe. And leave share us, with a friend. Yeah, share, leave us a rating. Leave us a rating, guys. Come on. Like, yeah. Just leave us a well. rating. We're your buddies. You know, we go way back. You might yeah. as well. You might as well. And I guess that's all we have to say. Harvey, you have to add anything before they jump into the podcast? I think that's it. Let's let them jump into it. It's a great conversation. You're going to love it. Bring out a pen and paper and you'll be good to go. There it is. Peace. Welcome to the Society Sucks podcast. Today, we have with us a singer and songwriter known as The Change. He has over 44,000 monthly listeners on Spotify, 39,000 followers on TikTok, and is being listened to in 149 countries. Dang. It is Anthony Wynn. Dude, cool. that was a beautiful, I, lo- I literally got chills. Oh, uh, it's awesome. Neon. Yes, yes. No, we're, we're happy to have you on as well. I've been following your journey here for a while. Yeah, I actually came really? across you on a TikTok that you made about you basically getting your life together, journaling, uh, meditating, reading books and all this stuff. So, oh, damn, yeah, that's like, old. Very, that's like a year ago, months. bro. Yes. Holy cow. Yeah. So literally a whole year ago. So I guess that's my first question. What started, what sparked really that whole like uh, s- personal development journey for you? Yeah, no, that's a great question. And dude, I really appreciate you, Harvey, like being here from that day. Cause dude, that's, that's, I think that's been like well over a year ago now. Yeah, that's, yeah, that, that's, that's time, insane yeah. that you uh, joined in from there. But uh, what got me in was, I don't know, dude, like, I guess I, t- I touched upon it in that video, but growing up, I was, I don't know, there wasn't like a lot happening around me and mm-hmm. like dreaming, like dreaming big or like doing something that's like, that I really wanted to do was never like a part of my life until I was like a lot older. I don't know. I just wasn't exposed to like success and like the fact that like you can have a career in in something that's like not quite normal, you know, like music. And like, I don't, you don't have to get like a traditional job and go to college and get a nine to five. And cause like none of that was appealing to me. I didn't know it at the time, but it took a while until I was like 14 or 15 when, uh, I don't know. Well, like a part of, okay. A big part of it was because my family was in like a situation where we just didn't have a lot of money growing up. And like, we were in a lot of debt. And so like, if me and my brother didn't do anything, I have an older brother. Uh, if we didn't do anything, then like my parents would be working till the day they die. So like, that was like the first motivation was like to first was like to make a lot of money so I can help them with that. That was the main thing. So then I started digging into like business and personal growth. Cause like, that's the way to do it. You know, it's like, mm-hmm. you, if you want to achieve anything in like the physical life, you have to really change your mentality behind everything. So that's why I just started getting to work and started reading books and started uh, watching videos and like lectures and podcasts, like everything you can get, you know, you can think of, I just dug deep into it. And um, yeah, from there, like, I don't know, it, like music was always music was like, I guess a part of my life the whole way through, but it wasn't, it wasn't until I was like 14. I never listened to like a whole album until I was like 14 or 15. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, once I did like, and I just sat there and like, listened to it, I was like, whoa, like this is insane. But I didn't realize I wanted to like make music at the time. It was kind of like, I never really thought it was possible. Mm -hmm. To make the money to like help my family out. And like, I was just so bad at it, dude. I was terrible at business and it was just not, it, it was not like who I am and like my calling and like where, where I'm best, where I best fit. But, uh, but I thought I could do that better over music because dude, at the time, like my, there was, I did not have a voice. Like I was not like gifted mm-hmm. musically growing up, man. Like there was like, there was nothing at all. Like, honestly, I would say like, I don't have much talent other than like a de- my desire and my ambition. Cause like everything was developed. I swear to you. Like, Dang, that's if, awful. if I like, I'll probably oh, like show really tracks good. in the future, but it's like, do my do my voice was horrendous and like the, actually the only reason I ever started like singing was because I saw a video of Ed Sheeran on like on like a talk show and he was and he goes and, and somebody said the same thing they go like oh my gosh like Ed how does it feel to be so talented and gifted and he's like dude I wish like he's like I'm not like and whenever anyone who says they are like he's like I'm not he's like I've just worked really really hard at it and he's like here I have proof and he pulled up like a video of him singing at like 11 or 12 while playing guitar and dude it was horrendous like the whole audience like like covered the ears like oh my like God. like you wouldn't believe Ed Sheeran was like that bad and I'm like I literally saw that video and like that changed my life because like damn if he can do it like I can do it you know what I'm saying like he was, he was bad man so it's like 
yeah. once I had that belief, I just, I don't know. I just started rolling, but uh, I'm kind of like throwing in, I'm bajilling different tangents. But like, no, no, that, that's, that's awesome. No, that's, that's a really good answer right there. Cause it carries off to so many other things. Yeah, and I think it shows something not only about your personality, it shows like, instead of seeing it as like, oh, you know, this person's too talented. How can I be that? You see it as, oh, I'm seeing this talented person. They're saying that all he had to do is try and work hard and put consistency behind it. That leads me to asking, I understand that in your journey, you took risks in your life to pursue in music without any serious music knowledge, like you were saying, and learned it all from scratch. That's pretty mind blowing. And I say that to say that what sparked the change? Like, is the change a will for better or is the change a spark to never give up? Or would you say it's a combination? No, that's a, that's a wonderful question. Um, definitely like, yeah, like a combination, like I, uh, the name kind of came about because I always wanted to, I don't know. I always like had this like desire to like, you know, like help people in some, in some sort of way. Like, like when I, like even me right now, like my quality of life isn't going to change much when I have money. Like it just really isn't like, I'm not into like buying fancy things and like, blah, blah, blah. Like, sure. I might, I, you know, like the main thing I'll be able to help my family out and then I'll be able to I don't know, go on more vacations or something. But like, there's really not much yeah. that like my life would change. Like, what am I gonna do with all this money? And like, I'm just well aware of like my future. And, and it's like, I know I just will be wealthy. And so like, but like, what am I gonna do with all this money? And so like, I don't know, the only way that could make me feel right is sitting with myself. Mm. I kind of wanted to change like stand. I always wanted my music to be bigger than myself. You know, like I wanted to, I want to create songs that are like really deeply honest, personal and vulnerable to the point where it's like uncomfortable for me to write. And then that, and that's like the only way, like it'll touch other people, you know, because like if it relates to me, then it'll relate to other people. And so like, I feel like it's like an artist's job to kind of like really wear their heart in their sleeve, you know, like, like to like a level where I'm not even comfortable. Dude, I literally like, so I just started journaling daily. Like this, the stuff I write in the journal, like I don't ever want to look back to like, like I, I'm uncomfortable while writing. I'm uncomfortable yeah. while like writing my lyrics and songs because I'm like, those are the ones that are actually going to make real impact on people, you know? Like, so like, that's kind of like the drive behind it. I always wanted, I want like my music to be way, way, way bigger than myself and like help people that, you know, listen to it and then, you know, use funds to create things in, in the future mm. and stuff. But like, I definitely want it to like stand for something more than just me. It's like, I don't care. I don't care about my face, you know, like, like, it's not about me. It's about the music and like the message and the impact it could bring along. Yeah, you no, know, that's awesome, man. And I guess like th that's really closely tied to what my next question was going to be. And I guess if you could summarize in like a statement or two, uh, what purpose do you wish to serve with your music? Man, beautiful. Uh, you guys are amazing with the questions. Though, though. I've only, this is my <laughs> second kidding, podcast. And, and, and oh, that's this, awesome. This awesome. Great. Great. I, I really appreciate it. Oh, man, purpose. I don't know. It's at first again it was like it was like for my family and then uh my brother kind of stepped in and like did like he like stepped into the the family business and kind of like kind of it's like survival as it was before that's like kind of the only reason why i can just like uh you know go and chase music and 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 whatnot but i don't know man like i always thought you have to have a purpose which i do you know like that's kind of like what i touched on before and like it's it's one to like get myself out of the situation and then once i like like once my bucket's full, you know, then I can like give, give as much as I can to other people. You know, if I don't fill my own bucket up first and I, I want like my water to be overflowing within my bucket and then so it just seeps in. And so like, it's like evergreen, you know, versus like, if I try to like, if I try to like give to other people right now, like I don't have much to give, you know what I'm saying? I just, I have no platform. I have no money. I have no connections. Like I ain't got nothing yet. So like I'm, my purpose right now is to like really get myself right. And so like, that's why I'm just focusing purely on my, my own career and then, cause then once I'm able to, in a, in a stage where I can, it's like help other people, I can help them to like the max potential. Like I have so many like cousins who are so good at music as well. And like, I, I produce songs for them just, just cause for fun, you know, and I just love it. And they're so talented, but it's like, I can, I can't really do much for them. And so I really want to get myself, um, you know, moves there. Like, but I'm enjoying like what I have right now. Like, like what you're saying, like, like I have like, like to me, these are small numbers, but I'm also like, I always have tried to have this fine balance of like, these are small numbers, but I am beyond grateful and it's bigger than I've ever done before, but also having a vision of the future at the same time. It's always like this fine balance that I'm trying to throw in my head. Like I'm unbelievably grateful. And like, I still am like mind blown. I'm like, man, like what if 4k, like once this was like, that's beautiful. It's way bigger than I've ever done. But I know like this is barely the surface of, you know, what I'm going to be just because I know, I know what my future holds. And so it's, it's going to be, it's going to be quite grand, but that, I don't know. That's kind of, it's kind of, 
No, that's awesome right there. I think that's beautiful because it shows, you know, the passion behind the work that you're putting in, but it's also showing, you know, the human side of things where you want to help others with that thing that, you know, is coming into your life. Because, I mean, I guess we all realize what it could be and what we want it to be. But I guess some people step back and don't think about when I get there, what am I actually going to do? And that's what you're doing. And that's the thing that blows my mind. It means a lot. Thank you. I really appreciate it. But I guess I could kind of lead us into when you were talking about making music for your cousin, making your own music. So tell us about the process. How do you get your inspiration, your inspiration for your music? Or where do you go to put yourself in a writer's mentality? Oh, sorry. You guys cut out real quick. I did, the question was like, uh, well, what was the question again? I didn't hear the question. Hey, it's okay, man. I got you. So <laughs> it's basically, tell us about the process of how you get your inspiration, oh, yeah. inspiration for your music and where do you go to put yourself in a writer's mentality? I love it. Um, dude, yeah, yeah. inspiration. I have like every day, like my mind is obsessive, you know, like, again, like one thing I've learned about people who are successful in general, like they are obsessed. Mm -hmm. And so I, my mind is constantly 24 seven thinking about music and ideas and like TikTok ideas and like all this, you know, mm -hmm. like, how do I grow my career? Like constantly 24 seven, like I can't turn it off. And so I, so every time I get an idea, like I'll just jot it down. And so like, and so like throughout the day, like my main inspiration is life in general, you know, it's, uh, mm -hmm. of, I definitely like focus on myself though, because I realize like the only way to like touch someone else is like, if I really dive deep into myself and then um, I like, cause we're all human. So we're all relatable to each other. And so if the deeper I dive into myself and understand my own emotions and feelings. And like, I, I, you know, I write about that. Then it's uh, by default, it's going to relate to somebody else because I'm human, you're human. Like it's just automatically. So mm -hmm. I try to dive, dr drive, uh, pull inspiration from myself and then a lot of times honestly from like my, my surroundings as well you know like my friends my family society you know as a whole like the world like I try to pull inspiration from everything like if I have a conversation with anyone like I'm constantly like like I go back to my notes and like I write down you know a bunch of ideas wow. because I just get so many like ideas like conversations like are big 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 for me because those are my favorite songs like the, the best songs are kind of the ones that are like they haven't been written yet, but like they're constantly said and talked about, you know, like those are the ones that become like iconic lines. It's like, oh, like I've said this a bajillion times before, like, like my last song, like keep it on the download. Like I heard that term like so many times. I was like, oh, that's, there you go. Like just plug into a song. And so it's like, if you take phrases that are used in conversations and then spin them into like a story of a song that's like relatable, then it's, it's kind of the way you do it. I mean, that's just like, like in history, that's kind of how it's done. Like of a bunch of hit songs yeah. um, like that, but I don't just, just my life in general in, in that definitely that's that's yeah. where i pull it off from nice so uh i guess what practices do you use to keep yourself in the game like what like like i guess daily habits or things that you do to basically yeah stay at the top of your game yeah dude um so i've always done like song a day challenges like by myself like to get better like right at, like once i heard that ed sheeran video i was like it's like okay how do you do it and then you know of course like he uh, he along with so many other people always touch upon the ten thousand hour rule you know, and so I'm like, all right, 10,000 hours, like, let's just get it. It's literally just putting in more time and then like, not just practice, but like deliberate practice. Cause you know, I've seen people, cause I think like, oh, like there are a lot of people that put in a lot of time yet they get nowhere. Like I do, I know a lot of musicians that have put in like decades of work and like, they're still like, they are not where they should be if they put in decades of work, if that makes any sense. So I was like, okay, yeah. it's not just time. Like you've got to be deliberately using your time properly. So I'm, I really believe in deliberate practice. Um, so from then on, I just, I literally sing every day, like every day for, I don't know, a long time, like I, uh, in tandem with writing. So I started writing every single day. Um, you know, for me, it's just like, cause I kind of broke it down. I was like, okay, how do I get to where I want to be? Like, what, what is, what do these artists have that I don't have? Like, of course they're amazing writers. They're amazing singers. Um, and, and, and for me, I love production. So like, you know, they're amazing producers as well. Mm. Um, and so like those three, that's like the only trio I kind of need. And so like my biggest thing I love, I'm like, I want to be known as like a songwriter. Definitely. Like I dream obviously to have my own songs. I want to write with other people. Like, like that's amazing. But so I've always gone on these song a day challenges, like constantly 24 seven. And then now I just embarked like for ready for my last song that has been my, my most successful song so far is, uh, I, that was from like a song a day challenge. I was like, all right, let's write a song every day. And then that one came about on the third day. And, and my philosophy behind it, because like, okay, music is so over oversaturated. There's 60,000 songs being released every single day. So there's, it doesn't even just matter about like a good song anymore. That's like the foundation of it. 
Hmm. But like marketing kind of, it takes over like 50%, you know, whereas before like a good song could like carry its own weight. But nowadays there's way too many songs and so much oversaturation and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, I got to get like way better. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. there's the, there's, there are kids getting like way too good. And I got to, I got to figure out how to get better. And it's just 10,000 hours. So I'm just like, I'm just like more time, more time, more time and, yeah. and really going at it. So song a day, I was like, I was like, okay, if I only write, if I only, whatever, I think I saw like a Kobe interview. Like Kobe was also, here's another inspiration, like story that really got me going was yeah. I watched an interview of Kobe. And when he said he was like 12 or 13 years old, he was in a, a summer league where he didn't score a single point. Mm. And I'm like, there's no way. Like, I, I've never heard him talk about this. I was like a big Kobe fan. I've studied him a lot. And I was like, what? You're kidding me. Like he didn't score a single point. And he goes, no. And he says, right, he's like, all right, just, he's going to play the long game. And so he's like, he analyzed like, okay, how, where, what are, how these kids, these kids are way better than him. And so he's like, how can I somehow get ahead of them? And he's like, okay, they're practicing two to three times a week for two to three hours. He's like, I'm going to double, I'm going to triple that. So he's like, mm -hmm. you know, he's going to go like six days a week for like four to six hours. And then, so he goes like, and just, but I map pure mathematics, right? It's like yeah. in one year, he will be like three times better than him. He'll oh, yeah. be like three times better than them. And so he comes back the next year. Um, and I think he said he's, he was working on fundamentals. So I think he only scored like one point the next year. Mm. Yeah, and putting in more hours and time and deliberately practicing. And then next year, I think he was like, I think his team won like state championships or something. Wow. And so like, he like played this like long game. And so once I heard that, I was like, okay, that's going to be me. Like once COVID struck, I was actually like, I've only recently been in Arizona. Like once COVID struck, I went back home uh, to my like childhood bedroom and like back with my parents. And dude, I was just, that was like, it was literally like 16 hours a day of just. Mm. Wow. 16 hours. Over and over. Like it, that, that's all I did, man. It's and I, like, I did not have a much of a life outside of that. I had very few friends. Like, I don't know. It's just, I just, that's just what I did because like, I really want to be great at what I do. And so, yeah. and, and once I learned that greatness wasn't like something like you're just born with, it can really be developed. Ooh. And I was like, okay, I'm all in, like, I'm all in, let's go for it. That's it right there. And I love that you're hitting on that about like, you're basically same thing that Kobe did. Like you're, you're raising your, your chances at success. Cause it's a, yes. it's a skill that you can constantly improve on. Like, like it's a numbers game, really. You said there's 60,000 being released every day. All yeah. right. Then you got to put, you know, twice, three times as much effort as everyone else. So it makes sense. Yeah, exactly. hundred percent. And so like right now, like I'm back on a song a day grind, dude. I'm just like, now I'm like, try, I have, I literally, I'm producing and writing uh, like a full fledged song every day. Like I can, I'll probably start releasing them on YouTube just as like as demos and see if they do anything. Then I'll go back and then release my favorite ones. Like, mm, yeah, I think that's a really good idea, man. It's crazy to me that you do the song a day idea. And I, th I love that actually. It's so cool. And I feel like, what do you feel like so far it has provided you when it comes to like creativity or even pushing you to be disciplined. Yeah, dude, I love that. That that's a beautiful thing because it's really hard. Okay. So creativity is in discipline. Like it's, I, they work hand in hand, like you need both, but at the same time, they're contradictory to each other. So creativity is like a place where you just want to play and create and freely and freely let go of like mm -hmm. opinions and everything. You know what I'm saying? Like that's creativity. Like, and, and so it's like, it's kind of like a more letting go process where discipline it's more so like a forced thing you know what i'm saying it's like okay sit down and do this so yeah. it's like how do you it's like yin and yang you know and so like it's very fascinating to play with it and but i really believe like that's why they're also hand in hand so like i really believe that like creativity fosters from boredom you know like think about like the time when you were younger and like you're just bored out of your mind you got nothing to do you and your friends just make up some games and you'll come up with something and so they kind of work hand in hand together and i really believe like with creativity funny funnily enough if you have some sort of constraint it'll it'll um foster creativity and so every day, like for me, like, I'm like, okay, I have to write a song a day before 12 or one. And before like, you know, create creatives, you know, as you guys know, it's like you overthink everything and like everything I'm doing, I'm like, oh no, this beats trash. I'm like, no, I got to write a better lyric, blah, blah, blah. And so having this sort of constraint, I'm like, I, I can't like overthink anything. Like I have, like, I don't have enough time to overthink things. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and also I don't really believe in like overthinking when it comes to creativity. Like I really believe the best thing was to just flow out naturally. Like for me, like I've heard so many like unlimited artists, uh, interviews where they talk about their best songs and it's always like oh yeah i wrote that in like 10 15 minutes and i'm like and you're like whoa that's crazy when you hear that but at the, and wow. i under, but i i believe that and i know they do but at the same time they've written like thousands of songs like mm -hmm. with like to, to get to that point and yeah. so that's why i just wanted to increase my reps but mm -hmm. it's wow. it, it's very fascinating when it when when you think when you see it that way and then so if like you train yourself like i remember ed sheeran he's i think he talked about he was writing like up to like seven songs a day 
And like, obviously you don't see that many songs put out by Ed Sheeran, but like, he's got thousands in the catalog. And that's what like, I'm trying to emulate because you don't like everything I make, like every song, every song I make every single day, they are not close to smashes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I just need one man. I only need one to pop. Like, I don't, I'm not, I don't care if they're quote unquote good or not. Again, also quality is subjective when it comes to creativity. And so that's why you don't really know. Like, you know, like you a lot of songs, do. you never know. Like a lot of songs that like big artists, like didn't even want to put out become the biggest hits. So you never know. And so I just want to- so and like and really like really try to not judge anything I create that's a really big thing for me you know like I feel like if you're able to create without judgment you kind of create the best things like the best songs yeah. are the ones that for me like they just flow right off the top and you don't have to think much about it and then and I don't know there's like a certain essence in that because like when you overthink things I don't know it just it, yeah. it just gets complicated and like you ruin like the magic of it in the beginning that makes sense yeah it's like know. kind of like that the path of least resistance is what tends to work because like yeah, you're, you're putting in all the work, you're putting in, you know, these numbers, you're trying to win the numbers game. But, you know, even even today's day and age, we see where sometimes the, the least amount of effort, or like you think you're putting in the least amount of effort, you think, oh, you know, this is kind of iffy, you know, I don't know. And then you put it out there anyway, and it, it reaps so much, you know, benefit. A lot of the guests we've had on the podcast, they've said the same thing too, you know, they, right. they, they don't know what's going to happen. They put it out there anyway. And it's like, dang, I didn't think it was going to be as good as people thought it was. So. yeah no 100 percent. i really believe that i love the mentality that you have when it comes to just like putting it out i mean obviously quality is subjective especially when it comes to creativity like you say mm -hmm. and that that's a beautiful thing because it will resonate with someone and someone somewhere out there is like mm -hmm. this is top quality mm -hmm. like i wish i you know could do this and that could lead into something of their own yeah. but I, something i noticed about you and social media is you're very raw on there and <laughs> in one yeah. of your your most recent actually instagram captions maybe not most recent but one of your instagram captions you said i want social media to be more raw honest and transparent so i'll be what i want to see and i want i feel like that's very different from the quote-unquote normal why do you feel like raw honest and transparent approach to social media is best or dude. do you prefer to be seen why do you prefer to be seeing that limelight dude i love that that dude i literally got chills like thinking about that's yeah, yeah, i literally got chills awesome. i actually i i swear to god i forgot i wrote that like i, I think that's so cool. that's why i heard i heard that back i was like damn that's good i'm like all right yeah, that's <laughs> good <laughs> um i don't know dude like i i'm i am obsessed with learning and and so like all the greatest artists that i've ever studied that's where they stem from like their power comes from their vulnerability and, and that's why I kind of think it's like the, the job as an artist, because it's, it's very hard to do. Like, it's hard for me. Like, again, like, that's why I tell you, like, it's hard for me by myself to like write in my journal and write these lyrics that are, are that raw and un uncomfortably, you know, I'm like, I'm thinking like, oh God, my family's going to see this. Like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. Like, oh. dude, I've gotten hit up so many times because they're like, are you good? Like, why are you writing stuff like this? I'm like, oh, I'm chilling. Like, it's just, I'm channeling it. You know what I'm saying? Mm, and, true. and, and like, it's crazy being this raw and, and vulnerable because dude, like, my family gets like not quote unquote attacked it's like the wrong word but like they've gotten approached like because like one of my songs is called like a gift from the sky and and it's not from my perspective it's from like perspectives of like my friends and family members that have like been through depression because i've never personally um experienced it but i've just been around it my whole life so i kind of i can understand it to the best of my ability without having gone through it so i wrote a song about that and like there's like a line about that where it's, i'm saying like how my parents like never really understand me and like they don't get me those those types of things and like my and my parents co-worker saw that and approached them and they're like yo what's wrong like what, what are you doing to your kid? And they're like, what are you talking about? And then like, they show them the song. They're like, oh my God. And so like, it literally causes like real life drama as well. But obviously like, I, it's it very easily cleared up. Yeah. But uh, that, I mean, those are the effects of like having it so like raw and, and vulnerable. I don't know. I, I really think it's, it's the artist's job because like, it's okay. It's, I think it's really fascinating how music again, like I'm making it by myself and, and most artists too. Like if you see like, I don't know, like another big uh, influence of mine is like Phineas, right? Phineas and Billie Eilish. Yeah. it's that's only them two making this music but millions hundreds of millions of people are hearing it and so it's such a weird contradiction where like like something you create alone by yourself will be heard by this many people mm -hmm. and so it's and, and like it's kind of like the artist's job in my opinion to to like do that because like if we don't do it not many other people will and and it's and it being able to express it through art you know it can relate and like allow people to really feel like they're heard in, in, in a way you know and like they're not so alone because like artists feel alone like dude i feel alone like i'm straight up like right here this is where i stay 16 hours a day bro like i feel alone and so and so like other people also are so alone and and so like but then like they don't have not that but then they're not the ones putting out like 
some sort of content or some sort of artistry to connect with others so it's like for whoever does it's like our job I feel like you know and also just because like I love it too it's like so in a way it's of course for them but it's it's obviously like it always comes back to like me you know artists at the same time they're very selfish as much as giving as I try to be like I'll admit dude I'm very selfish at the same time like I make music that I want to make that I want to listen to you know that like relates to me but I but I know by doing that it'll relate to other people at the same time uh, so I don't know yeah. I think I, I think it's I think it's everything yeah, I was about to say that by you doing that, taking the time to focus on yourself and like you said, channel those emotions, it might seem selfish, but for it, it ultimately does everyone else good because you're actually taking the time to be authentic, be real and then put that down on paper. And so many more people relate to that rather than just, you know, being fake and trying to make an impression out there. You're, you're actually taking the time to be real and, and channel those emotions. So I feel like that's what's going to win in the long run. Yeah, 100%. And, and even music nowadays, it's, I think that's what makes like the best career long artists, you know, like multi-decade long artists too. Mm. Cause like, dude, again, with the oversaturation of music, there are more people ever getting record deals, you know, ever in history before. And, and so many people popping off and having these one hit songs, but at the same time, like a lot, of, I love all music, honestly, like I'm a fan of every single genre, but a lot of it doesn't have substance at the same time. And mm. so like, I'm, I'm in the, in the songs that change my life, like as a fan are the ones that have these substances, you know, and like that talk about real topics other than just like traditional love songs and, and whatnot, you know, they touched upon mm. topics that aren't talked about as much. And so that I think there's like a big gap in the market, even though it's actually, there are way more artists, of course, doing that, but then there's a bunch of artists now filling in this new gap, you know, like, mm. like I want to do this, but I see amazing, um, incredible artists out there, you know, like on TikTok and all these these platforms like creating these really vulnerable honest songs and creating them into like pop smashes like and it's such a cool con uh, such a cool thing to see so like i'm just i'm pumped for it at the same time but that's definitely like the lane i want to ride upon mm, no that's awesome and i guess also for our viewers watching this i believe you're in your closet right now right yeah okay <laughs> this is so it. <laughs> that is like you're, you're putting in the what's necessary to get there right like you're you're using these restrictions you're doing what's necessary you're being honest about it you know usually people want to hide all this stuff away and appear as something bigger than what they currently are yeah. you're saying no this is what i'm doing this is what it's <laughs> going to take i feel like that is more inspirational to someone out there that's also just starting than you making it to seem like you know you already you already got it all you know what i mean so Dude, that right there is so awesome i appreciate it i mean yeah this is literally this is it man like i'm i write and record in a closet like there's no chair like like i'm up on a drawer right now pretty much like nice. there's no i just stay i stand here bro i gotta take breaks to, like sit sometimes i'm like damn dude this, this is ridiculous yeah. and then uh but i love it at the same time like i'm yeah. not i don't know i don't create from like a place of like oh i gotta like prove myself i gotta make it like mm. at the same time dude i'm, I'm kind of enjoying this stage because I, I really view like life and seasons so i'm like this is just a season of my life this is like the broke hungry part of the movie you know whatever like i'm sleeping i'm literally sleeping on my friend's couch right now it's like i'm like screw it like i'm just eating dude i just had like two peanut butter jelly sandwiches like that's like my daily food bro that's my daily intake like mm. i'm like whatever i don't sure i know i need to be healthy and whatnot but at the same time i just feeling like this as like this like fun little this fun season where i'm just trying to make it and, and you know it's like it's like and it doesn't have to be like this thing where it's like oh i gotta you know there's like this huge yeah. chip on my shoulder i mean sometimes i feel it but i don't know I, i'm kind of enjoying this stage because i know i know things are going to change quickly and 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 i'm going to enjoy i want to enjoy every single season because i feel like if i'm not happy now here funnily enough like i don't know if i'll be happy later when i'm on stage and stuff it's like i don't want to keep like extending this deadline goal of like where i'm saying like now i'll be happy now i'll be fulfilled because i've tried that before and like it never works out and i've heard countless artists like a big thing obviously like i try to learn as many people say that yeah yeah dude I, countless but it's you hear people say it, but it's like another thing to like experience it you know like that's why i feel like even though a bajillion people say everybody knows it in the back of their head but it's like it's so hard to understand unless you've gone through it but for me bro i don't want to go through that i don't want to work like a decade win win you know go on world tours and like get grammys like all this ridiculousness and then just to like be there standing there holding it and be like damn dude i still feel it does not make me feel the way i wanted it to make me feel and like i've heard artists talk about these and i just i try to internalize it now so i don't have to make the same mistake i'm not trying to waste a decade of my life just to say now i've made it but then by the time i've made it i missed the entire like way getting there which was like the best part and then you know like now it's like over so it's like that's the better mentality i would yeah. say what do you, know what you think i feel like i completely agree with that sort of mindset because it really is the majority is enjoying the process mm -hmm. and then once you get it you're you know you already knew it was going to happen you're just glad that you were enjoying yeah. Yeah. getting there yeah and it's crazy that you're talking about this as well because yeah. literally on our last episode we we're talking about destination based happiness yeah and you're, you're actually being the person who's you're the opposite the of yeah, yeah you're enjoying <laughs> the moment right now which is 
I feel like so healthy. Yeah, it's so healthy, but it's yeah. like what advice do you have for people who are struggling with that that are so like involved in their future and always seeing their future that they forget and they miss the moment? I love that. No, that's a great question. Um, so my so my brother, like I learned so much from my brother. He's like a modern day philosopher, in my opinion. Like I learned so much from him and I and I owe a lot. He's a big reason. Of, he's a huge reason as to why I'm even doing music. Um, but I remember one day he told me, you know, because we always have like conversations, kind of like you guys, you know, like we'll just have conversations with like girls yeah. and whatever, like life and stuff. And I remember him telling me, he's like, dude, like, what would you do if you already had it all? You know, like, what would that day look like if you already accomplished everything you could, you wanted to, like, you made all the money you, you, you want, like everything, everything's good. I'm like, damn, dude, that's a good question. Like, I don't know. Like, I mean, I'll probably like make music because I just love to make music. I'll probably hang out with my family, probably hang out with my friends. You know, I, I'll just enjoy every day. You know, like, it's not that complicated. He's like, like, why can't you do that now? And I'm like, damn, I'm like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Cause I'm like, like ready on, like at that time, a part of me was like, no, because like, I have to get my, my money right before I can do that. And I got, you know, I got to make it first and then I can kind of, I can like, I got to make it and then I can relax, you know, and then, and then kind of live the life that I dream of. But he's like, why can't you just live the dream life now? And like, quote unquote, maybe it might take longer for you to reach. Like, let's say like, instead of like hanging out with my friends and family for like the few hours of, of the day and whatnot, I could be working on music instead. And yes, that would technically get me closer to my goal, but but like what all for it? and what what's the point if I'm not even happy again during the process so it's like it's so like kind of bringing that future into the present is kind of like how I do it you know and also just knowing like also like this is this one's really hard to develop because it took me years to develop like this like unwavering faith in the fact that I will be where I want to be mm. like because then you're not so rushed like because ready yeah. only only if you doubt it only if you doubt it and you're like will I ever even make it? which again I've done a bajillion times in my life but it's like only when you doubt that you're not going to make it and whatnot, are you ever really worried about where you are? Like, if you knew where you're going to be, why would I be worried about being in a closet right now? I'd only be worried if I'm stuck here. I'd be worried if I'd like, <laughs> if this is so it good. for the next like five or 10 years. But I know, bro, within a year, I'm out of here, you know, or maybe I'm not. I kind of like it. I don't know. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, right? So it's crazy. like, if you really know that you're going to quote unquote make it, why worry in the meantime why can't you just take the time to smell the roses bro and just just enjoy life like the bro every night like i'd be watching like avatar with my friends you know what i'm saying like yeah, yeah i'm grinding here but like i'm also having fun at the same time that's why i'm not so stressed in this mm -hmm. freaking two by six closet you know what i'm saying okay. like that that right there is a very powerful mindset very you know powerful. i hope all our listeners realize that and obviously easier said than done but so way take, easier said take, than done take something from this because once you develop that kind of mindset it's like you have that path of least resistance like you're you're accepting of whatever is to come and you have the unwavering faith that you know what i'm gonna get to where i want to be regardless and i'm fine with where i'm at right now because you're gonna get there that's that's fucking 100 percent. honestly 100%. that hypes me up so much yeah. and i really do <laughs> resonate with what you're saying Dude, because i you. feel like we're on a journey right now and mm -hmm. I, I feel like harvey and i can resonate yeah. with what you're saying mm -hmm. and it's very beautiful what you're saying and i hope people like you said are yeah. listening like write this down people write yeah. this down <laughs> like, that's powerful. why this is so powerful because <laughs> I feel like once you have that mentality, even before you start to get everything that you've ever wanted, mm. you realize that you're already going to get it simply because you're already thinking that way. Mm -hmm. yep. And that's just what separates people. And, you know, I know we're talking about the opposite end on another previous podcast. Mm -hmm. I guess it could be seen as when they learn at that point, like towards the end, when they realize that, mm -hmm. that was their story and they're okay with that. Yeah. And I guess that's an extra motivator to keep going for that. Mm -hmm. But I guess you can flip the switch and see the other side as well. Yeah, there's there's two sides. And that's what I'm saying. We're not it's not either one is bad. It's just what lesson comes to you first and which one do you decide oh, to that's learn true. and resonate with. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah, but no, nah, man, that's honestly that that's mm -hmm. crazy. And it's crazy that you're saying that because it's it's something that I feel like people should realize like now and the thing is like we don't want to spread the message of oh one day it's going to be too late or you're going to get to a point where you realize it's not everything that you dreamed of but i feel like wherever you're at in your life it's important to realize these things that man i should like be happy for where i'm at right now and you know i guess um probably already asked this but what practices do you use to, to center yourself again like you, do you really not find yourself stressing about like dang you know maybe maybe not what do i need to do to make it happen or what practices do you use to center no, yourself? Together? No, dude, I love that. <clears throat> like, again, I say this, and uh, again, I do 
try my absolute hardest to, you know, do everything I'm also saying, but also at the same time, I'm human. So dude, constantly through my mind, it's like a constant battle in my head, bro. Like, yes, I am. My overall state definitely is like what I just said, but all the time, like, I can't even help it. Like those thoughts will creep in and like the doubt will come in, man. And I'll just be like sitting in the closet. I'll be like, damn, will I ever make it? Like, shit, I don't know, man. Like, I really hope so. Like, but I don't know. I, I try to like, I, you know, I journal, I just started journaling. I used to be a big journaler. Um, and that kind of just helps me like get all the overthinking out onto a page. Mm-hmm. Like I do a thing called, I read a, I read a book called, uh, the artist way by Julia Cameron. And, um, it's an amazing book on like creativity. And she kind of talks about this concept called morning pages, where it's just three pages every single morning of like unfiltered thoughts. Like the one rule is you can't stop writing. So like, if, even if you don't know what to write, you're writing, I don't know what to write. And so like, you're kind of just like brain dumping, you know, and it kind of like clears your subconscious and like things will come up that you don't even, you realize you're thinking about and like kind of get all the jumble out of your head. And so like, that helps me a lot because like, again, when you're in your head, dude, there's like a million different voices. Like, honestly, a lot of them aren't even your own, you know, like, like voices from society or voices from your parents and like voices from your friends, like all this stuff, like what you, they think you should be doing. But like, I don't know. I think you have to like, filter out and clear and like realize like on, the only voice that matters is like the, like your voice you know and 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 you always like I really trust like my gut and my instincts and it's like I always will know like what what to do like what's the next phase and thing but yeah dude all the every single day dude it's a constant battle like right. constantly I'm like dude, like I'm literally before this I was making a song I'm like song's trash like I don't like you know I don't like all right let's make another one but at the same time I'm like no nah, it's it's good it's fine maybe other people are gonna like who cares who knows I don't know yeah you know, like, I guess the difference is that it's about what you do once those thoughts come in because the thoughts are bound to creep in. Something yes. externally is bound to try and break through that barrier. I guess it's up to us to say, no, you know, I'm going to hold on to my faith. I know I'm going to make it work regardless of what thoughts start to like, you know, come up. And I guess that journaling thing that you're talking, that journaling exercise about, you know, getting, the, getting it to an unfiltered state of mind like that, that right there is powerful too. A hundred percent. Yeah. Like that too. I, I mean, I also meditate. I'm honestly very on and off if I'm being honest with you, yeah. but meditating is, unbelievably powerful like I'm, I'm such a big fan so I, I want to get back on to like a daily habit of meditating um and also the big thing for me like when I feel said feelings you know like most people um they try to numb said feelings you know like with alcohol with drugs and like distractions and all that stuff and of course like I will I, I mean I constantly distract myself all the time but the best way for me to handle those feelings and like it's the hardest way um but I literally just like sit there and and feel every single feeling that arises in a way because in a way when I do that I kind of like okay before like like let's say you're distracting yourself you're kind of like pushing away the feeling but it's also still there so you're not letting yourself like fully experience that and then so it's always going to be bubbling up there no matter how much you distract yourself with all these different things you know with social media with, with alcohol whatever like whatever distraction food you know anything and so I kind of just try to sit there and feel it all because in a way, for some reason, when you do that, like it like kind of like fills your entire being, but then it kind of like lets it go at the same time. Cause wow. now I've been able to like really feel it fully and then kind of process through it versus feeling it and be like, Oh God, get like, get down. Like I'm scared of this, like just push it right back down. And so like, I just kind of sit there and, and feel it again, journaling could help with that, you know, like working through it for me, writing songs, obviously, like, that's why like when those strike, like I, I go immediately to my computer and I start like writing because that's a release. That's my release. I feel like everybody can kind of develop their own release and to like, to feel it, you know, like you don't want to run away from it. You really got to sit there and just feel it. And so when, for me, I use music for, you know, I use journaling, like there, anyone can have a million different ways, you know, like yeah. it, it could be whatever talking to somebody, you know, whatever, like, you know, every time you're going through something, you talk to like your best friend or your family member, like you always feel better after like what I do. So it's like, but it's cause you're actually working through it. You need to work through it versus just running away from it. The point is to find something to, to release, find your own release. Everyone has their own individual way of doing that. Yours happens, happens to be in an artistic musical way. Yeah. Everyone's got to find their own way. That's awesome. That's a beautiful way to explain. I've never actually thought about it in that yeah. way. You know, that reminds me too, actually, I know we're talking about things that center ourselves What about externally? How does your family and friends react to what you're doing? And are they supportive? Or are they kind of like, hey, maybe like, don't do this? (laughs) Well, dude, at first, okay, so I graduated high school early at 16, I think, like one year early, um, because I... I mean, I did well in school, but I hated school to death, dude. Like Mm. I would just, I would, you know, I would just scrape by to like get, you know, get the right grade or whatever. And just, and that was it. Like I hated it so much Mm. and it's not, I hate the education system, but I love education. Like I'm obsessed Mm. with learning, dude. Like, again, I taught myself everything. And so it's like, there's a big difference between that. You know, the schools just don't teach, like they won't teach me how to have a music career. You know, they won't teach me, you know, how to market, um, 
you know, market myself and how to, and, you know, again, like how to interpret my own feelings and like create those in artistic ways. Like the school's not going to teach that. So like, that's a dive into myself, dude. But when I first graduated early, like it was a battle with my parents, man. Like, of course, like they love me and they're supportive in the end, but man, it was, it, it created so much friction and tension. Like it, it was, it was very, very bad. Um, and I don't know, it, it took like, it took years for them to keep it coming around. Cause again, at the time there was no hope of me doing music at this, like, it wasn't good. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. there wasn't, it wasn't anything like, and it wasn't, it wasn't until like years later, literally years after like me putting in all the work and like my music was starting to like finally be put out there. And then people are starting to see the numbers go up, you know, that's when they start like believing in. And like, like, it was so funny the other, like, so like for my parents, of course they need external things to like see it. And I get that. So I don't, I don't really yeah. blame them. Cause again, it is, it is all just stuck in my head and until it's actually in this physical world. Am I really doing anything? I don't know. Like to me, I, I am, I get that. Like every year, dude, I would tell my mom, I'm like, this is the year, mom. You don't get it. I'm just like a delusional optimist, right? I'm a dreamer. Delusional optimist. Yeah. That's, that's our yeah. word. Yeah. Keep yeah, going. Dude. Wow. That's so Love good. It. Dude, seriously. So every single year I'd be like, mom, this year, like I remember leaving college or leaving high school and I was like, and I wasn't going to college obviously. And so I was like, this is it. Like, watch what I'm gonna do this year. I didn't do, I didn't do much that year. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't do much. I tried my best, but like, I, I mean, nothing really happened. Well, I mean, I, I mean, I worked on myself like heavily. And of course I, 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 I decreased the gap between like me and my, where I want to be. But at the same time, there was nothing you could see. There's no numbers. Like sure. I had songs. They weren't that good, you know, like really it's still rough. So like my parents needed external things to see it. And it wasn't until like literally just recently, again, they're seeing the numbers and they're like, Oh my gosh, like, this is crazy. They're seeing, and like a big thing was like seeing like all of their family members talk about me, you know, in a way, because, and they were like, yo, like, you see what your kid's doing? And like, it was so funny. Okay. They FaceTimed me the other day. Um, they were at church and they, they heard, and I was in Arizona. And so they're, they're back in Florida and they heard one of my songs being played from someone's car. And they thought it was me. Wow. Like, they're like, why else would somebody be? So like, so they were like, what? Like, they're like, is my son here to surprise me? And I'm like, no, I'm right here. And so they were like, they're like, what? And what is it? And so they walk up to the car and it's just, it's the girl who goes to church, their church, listening to my music. And they're like, you, you listen to the changes she's like yeah you're kidding me they're so good and wow. so like they were blown away dude they were like there's no way like is this really happening and so that that that, awesome. that kind of like flipped big switches in their head and they're like whoa like he's really doing this so like now they're very supportive it was a battle at first i mean especially for me like ready my parents like fled the vietnam war you know so like the big and especially in their culture uh they're from vietnam and the biggest thing is education like college specifically and sense. so like me throwing that away it's like dude, it's like the biggest mortal sin I could ever create. You know, it's like, it's like, it's, it's massive to them, but I knew, okay. I knew if I did it, I would be severely depressed just to make them momentarily happy. happy right. Mm -hmm. Or I could create a little friction now, set myself up. So I'm happy, um, you know, happy now. And then also I will be set in the future and then create some tension here, but then it'll be resolved. Like, like it is now, you know, where they, when it sees, when they see like, it's finally working, Mm -hmm. then then we can both be happy but if i took the college route i would be so depressed and they would be good not even really because i would they're only good if i'm good and so if yeah. i'm not good then they're not good bro so like That's it's like a lose lose and so yeah. like but it's so hard for anyone to do you know like my cousins constantly try to talk to me like about that literally exact same situation like you know everybody goes through it especially yeah. you know with built it's built into our culture and and so it, I mean, that, like, that was the only path. It causes so much friction, but I believe that was, that's the only path where like both of us if, at the end could be happy. Mm. It took a while to get there, but now we're, we're, we're pretty, we're really there. So yeah. it, it's really cool now. It's, they're so supportive. Like they're my biggest supporters for sure. That's so good. And yeah, like you said, I guess it was like a necessary, you saw it as like something necessary, something that was temporary. It's going to cause some friction between us, but yeah, and it's going to work out. Because like you said, I guess they see it also as like as like a destination based happiness. Like, oh, you know, once our kid grows up to be all this, you know, what then we'll be good. But it's like once you're there, you look back at all the years past that that led up to that, and you're like, dang, he was sad the whole time. What the heck? This is what he <laughs> wanted. But like yeah, like yeah. you said, you're you're creating you're creating something that's good for everyone in the end, even if you're the only one that currently sees it, which is is probably the toughest part of the journey, is being the only one who can see yeah, it. That is that is the name of the game, man. Like, like you have to, it, it is so hard. Like, dude, I just remember so many nights where, again, like, I'm just, I'm literally like laying there on my floor, like in a fetal position. I'm like, dude, I don't know if I'm gonna make it, man. Like, <laughs> this is rough. Like, my voice is so far away. My lyrics aren't even close. My production is garbage. Like, I knew where I wanted to be, but like, I knew where I was at at the same time. So just like feeling that gap, I was like, dude, I'm so far away. Like, I hope, I hope this really works out, you know? And I just, I try not to think about it. And I just kept going back to work and really believe, again, the belief is the biggest thing. Like, it is, mm -hmm again, like, that's why I, I really don't believe I don't have much talent other than the fact that I, I believe in myself so much. Honestly, though, it took 
okay, before I believed in myself, though, like other people believed in me for me, like, again, like my best friend, uh-huh. like that I'm living with right now. And so like, it's, it is really hard. Like I say that now it's really, it's really hard to believe in yourself when like, there's not much going for you at the time. But my best friend, you know, who, whose couch I'm sleeping on, like he always saw it in me before, like I even did music and I told him. And, and so like, that was like a huge, huge, huge thing for me. Like my aunt, um, as well, like she was a game changer for me and my brother. And so like, I had a few people who believed in me before I believed in myself and then their unwavering belief finally trickled into me. And I'm like, wait, maybe I can do this. You know, like yeah. maybe it is possible. Maybe I am as good as they think I am, you know? And so it took a while to get there. Again, it was just a lot of like personal growth and like working on myself and stuff like that. But I mean, having people around you is like so vital, but I mean, it, it is, that is a privilege. I would say, you know, it's like, if you don't have other people, like you do have to be your biggest cheerleader, you know, cause yeah, you will be sure. working countless hours, thousands of hours before anyone sees any sort of progress, even, you know, even yeah. you. And so it's like, if you don't do that, you're just going to go crazy and think like, you'll never, it'll never uh, happen. But I don't know, kind of returning to like the philosophy I brought up earlier, where it's like, if you really know, like, that's why it's so powerful to know. Cause like, if you knew you were going to make it, like, how would you operate on a daily basis? Yeah, you know, you wouldn't have to be so like, you wouldn't be so like sad and depressed on the daily. You'd be like chilling. You'd be like, all right, I'm good. Like, let's just make another song, you know, for me, like, all right, let's make another song today. Like I'll, I'll be good regardless. So like, let's just, let's just do whatever makes me happy. And then, and that way I'm creating better music. And then and then again, I'm, I'm happy in the moment, which is like the whole goal of life anyway, you know, like yeah. you don't have to achieve like these ridiculous big, big dreams and desires. Like I, that's just me. Cause I like it, but you know, like I, like my roommate um, over here, like, dude, he's, he's, he's just, he's just living life and enjoying like a simple, beautiful life. And I, I see so much beauty in that. And I see, I think that's just as beautiful as anyone doing like these big accomplishments. Like, I don't think it's very necessary. Like the culture kind of breeds us to like, think that we have to be doing a lot with our lives and we have to be giving back and we have to be doing all these things. I think if you just find like some sort of happiness and fulfillment with yourself, it'll kind of, you will have your impact in your own community regardless. And if every single person does that, then that is a world, that is a big difference in the whole world. You know, it really does like just begin with yourself. Like, I don't think you need to do all these crazy things. Although that's what I like to just because I don't know, I was kind of born, I guess I was born with that in my head, but I don't know if you really get yourself right, you will have such a massive impact among you. Okay. Here's a big example. Like me. Okay. So all my cousins, like I can see it, like, a lot of them, you can, t- like, we all know, like, a lot of them, like, hate school just as much as I did, but they can't, they don't have, like, the courage to be able to, like, get up and leave and go against all their parents and, like, go against the family, you know, and that stuff, because, dude, I'm, like, it was a ridiculous, battle, man. it was really bad, oh, and so it is, it, it was really hard, and so for them, it's, it's still hard for them to do it, but then I remember, like, talking to my cousin, like, my cousins would talk to me about this, and, like, there were dilemmas in their head, like, there's, like, oh, like, I'm so depressed going to school, and I'm not, and, like, I'm getting a degree that I don't even want in, you know, it's, like, it's, like, in the medical field and whatever, and, like, they want to be doing this, like, some kind of creative outlet and stuff, but they can't, and I remember, like, we, like, we would have conversations about this, and then I remember, like, just from them seeing me live my own life, like, go chase my dreams, do music and stuff, they they slowly like it took like years but they, they will slowly come around and be like wow maybe wow he can do it maybe i can do it and so like i literally see like i see the impact i never tell them to do anything the impact of just me doing my own thing and chasing my dreams having a massive impact on them like one of my cousins like finally like like uh switched like their majors and like went to like uh like hair and stuff which is like something she's always dreamed of and she's literally happier than she's ever been and i never thought i'd see her get to that stage bro because like she i remember she went through so much like dude, she was on like the antidepressants like and everything you know what i'm saying and like she now she's like happier than anyone a- anyone in our whole family because she was brave enough to like go and do it but she literally looked at me like yeah like a couple weeks ago and she was like it's really because of you because you're doing this and like you helped me so much and i see you doing it and so i'm not so scared anymore and i'm like i'm like in the, like i literally get like chills thinking about it because that's what's so beautiful about you doing your own thing and like chasing your dreams and living your life you will have an impact by default to everybody around you and anyone in your life Dang, that is like beautifully put man because that's so true when people i feel Very like there's good. there's something magical about when a person steps <laughs> into their full authority when a person steps into you know they actually start to believe in themselves you know that naturally has like an effect on the people around you so beautifully put man honestly that was awesome. i really i really do want to add to that too it's something that harvey mentioned yeah. earlier that reminds me of something it's be, i see it as um you taking your power back and you know like like you you mentioned before you know you never know what society friends family they put into you until you finally realize it for yourself and I feel like that's kind of like you taking your power back and realizing like yeah this is my life yes you know I might not do what my friends or my family say I'm supposed to do but I'm doing this because I'm genuinely happy doing it Mm. and I think that's the most beautiful thing any individual can do for themselves especially Mm. if you know they find themselves enjoying it yeah 
Hundred percent. I couldn't agree. I love. I love you like your little claps while I'm. Get like, some oh, hype. I know it's like, oh, going. <laughs> I know I'm feeling it. He's like, hey, I'm saying some good stuff over here. Yeah, I'm like, oh, it's actually good. Okay, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> They're really good, man. No, I'm telling you, like, people need to ask themselves these questions, like you say. Yeah. Like, where am I? Like, what am I going to be doing once I already achieve everything? So mm-hmm. everyone listening right now, ask yourself that question. Yeah. Comment down below your answer. Yes. And maybe we'll read them. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And one thing too that I liked uh, is about, uh, you know, going back to delusional optimism, right? And it's like, um, it's funny because we have these jokes about like, man, are we just stuck in a loop where we have like this boost of inspiration? We're like, dude, you know, this is our year. And then, you know, maybe not much happens. And then we come back <laughs> and then we're like, dang, are we just stuck in an endless loop? Is this that? And then the overthinking starts, you know what I mean? But it's like, no, you have to, you're always bringing in something new, even if it doesn't seem like it. Because you true. can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking back. So then you see the journey. You're like, ah, this actually served a purpose in my life. So that's what that reminds me. Dude, 100%. I love that. I love yep. that. And so I guess also to start wrapping this yeah. thing up, uh, what words of advice do you have for anyone out there pursuing music? That's good. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a great question. <clears throat> Man. I don't know. I'm trying to think like this what whole, I this whole episode is advice, basically. Yo, <laughs> I love it. No, you know what I said? This is my this is my favorite thing uh in the whole wide world. Like this is this is all I talk about. Like, yes, I channel it through music, but I'm just obsessed with like life in general, like this type of thing, you know, like because like it's not even like someone doesn't really take off, in my opinion, like if you're like if your music's good enough. Like I really believe like once you get like your whole being and your character right mm. and your mentality, like things will just start working because your oh, brain will start firing. Like I'll start coming up with the song ideas that'll make it the smash, you know, like, I, and, and I'll like piece things together. And it's like, I, music is my vehicle, you know, but it's, I, I really believe if you're just like a study or an observer of life and like, and you work on yourself and personal growth, like that will get you further than like anyone with like a good voice and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, sure. Like I like my voice now. It took a while to get here, but at the same time, I am nowhere close to being like anywhere close to like, as these unbelievable singers that have been at it for like you know years and years and years like i'm not even close but like to, it doesn't it literally doesn't even matter about having those types of things i don't know you just kind of need like to piece things together the right way but i don't know where's advice i'm trying to think like what i do because obviously i wouldn't i hate saying anything that i don't do personally i don't know man i'm, I'm a really big believer in of course one believing in yourself um i'm a big believer in just putting in the hours dude like there's nothing more valuable than that like i just again like write if you really want to do music like then start putting it out there. A big thing for me, like, was was when I started to put it out there, I was deathly scared, dude. Like, I didn't put out music for, like, the first year at least or two. Like, I only sent it to my brother and my aunt, and that was it, dude. Like, I only showed it to two people. I didn't even show my own parents, bro. Like, that's how, like, wow. deathly scared I was to put it out. Yeah. For me, putting it out there, again, because it's so scary. Like, I'm writing, like, my most vulnerable and honest things. It's like, I don't want anyone to hear this. Like, this is, like, the stuff I'm keeping to my journal, but I don't know, like, again but then once I put it out there I started realizing like oh wow other people connect to this and it helps them and it relates like and it kind of keeps you going in that sense and then I mean if you want to do that again you can also just create because you love it for yourself doesn't matter you know I don't know just uh, kind of do that but for anyone wanting to get to music dude like oh but TikTok is like unbelievable you know like if you really want to be successful like I'm only focused on two things is like creating the best music I possibly can and like trying to market it in the best way possible on TikTok mm-hmm. like like my numbers are still like so small in comparison to what they'll be but again i'm so grateful at the same time and i love it and it's bigger than anything i've ever done but at the same time they are puny uh i'm watching all these artists you know like blow up you can blow up overnight like it just takes one song like what i keep reminding myself is like i am one song away from like everything changing my entire life millions of dollars whatever i am just one song away i'm one hook away you know what i'm saying so like if you remind yourself that like when you're like when you're going through the trenches man like i remind myself that all the time i'm like I'm like, man, this song's trash, but I'm like, all right, I'm one song away. It could be the next one. It could be the next hundredth. I don't know, but I'm just, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'll just keep going at it until it works. Like you're, so you're just one away. If you really want it, you're just one away. It's just so just increase your odds. Just keep working at it and just make more, you know, I don't know. That's, that's kind of what I'm doing. Perfect. That's it. That's a solid answer. I think that's amazing. And I guess to wrap up, we kind of lead into five rapid fire questions that Harvey will be reading off. Yes. These rapid fire questions have been inspired by Jay Shetty. So oh, I love Jay Shetty. Yeah, yeah he's, he's amazing. So now we're going to hit into the first one. Uh, what is the best piece of advice you've ever received? Oh, man, I'm not prepared for this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is it of, I don't know, dude. There's, there's a million, million, a million pieces mm. of good advice. Uh, I don't know. Uh, let go. Just let go. Let go. Yeah. Let go. Oh, okay. That's good. That's a good one. Uh, second question. What is the worst piece of advice you've ever received? Oh, uh, 
I don't know, something along the lines of like be realistic or something like that. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, I agree with that. One. Not good advice. <laughs> Third one, what is something that you know to be true, but that others might disagree with you on? Um, that you really like that what we were talking about earlier that you you can literally be happy in the process of it like i think i don't think many people believe in that you know what i'm saying Maybe like i don't think i don't agree with that too yeah that's really good man super good yes uh fourth one what is something you wish you knew earlier oh man um I mean, that I'm going to make it no matter what I do. Because <laughs> mm. I don't know, that's just what have brought me a lot of peace early on. You know what I'm saying? Like, In confidence. Yep. Yeah. And then now it's our question right here. And it is, uh, what is one thing, what, what is one thing that you think we could all do to make society suck a little less? <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Um, man, no, these are great questions. because I don't know what, I don't know how to answer. <laughs> um. I don't know, man. Like I'm, I'm a really big believer in like you finding your own path and like chasing your dream. Because like, as I, as we talked about earlier, like you, you will, you will by default, just make society suck a little less, you know, if like you're really happy, then like, you'll be walking down the street and like compliment a random stranger and you'll make their day. They'll go and talk to like somebody else and be like, you won't believe it. Some random stranger just complimented my shirt. And like, you know, like these things make drastic differences, you know, like the butterfly effect is really real. Like you, like one small, one small thing you do on a daily basis, you know, could forever change the outlook on someone's life, you know? Mm -hmm. And so like, you really never, you really never know. And so, but the only way to do that and do that consistently is to like make, you know, work on yourself and like really get yourself to a place where you're kind of just overflowing with this like happiness and you can kind of spread it around your community and yourself. So like, I don't know, to me getting yourself right. Like it's everything. Like, you, I don't know, by default, you will change the world, you know? That's perfect. I love that wow. answer right there. That was really good. Yes. So just like that, that was the episode here with the change. Now, where can everyone go find you? Yeah, perfect. Um, anywhere. I'm most active on like Instagram and TikTok. And so the change is coming um, on Instagram, on TikTok. But I really appreciate you guys for this amazing interview. Like, dude, this is like, this is only my second, but I feel like this is going to be one of the best for a really long time. Like you guys hey. asked unbelievable questions. Thank Just, you. The environment was great. The flow was amazing. Like I'm, I'm such, I'm a big fan of you guys and I'm a big fan of this podcast. So I really, awesome, appreciate man. Hey, we appreciate yeah, that. We man. really do. We're big fans of you too, man. You're going to, you're going to do great things, man. We see you, you. Your, your character's already there. Now it's just a matter of time. The only thing separating is time at this point. Yeah, right? exactly. That's what I believe. That's what we always like to say. Time just needs to catch up yeah. and yep. we appreciate the flowers. Like we said, all these flowers, are reciprocated mm -hmm. to you because we see what you're putting in mm -hmm. we resonate with the energy and we thank you for taking time to be here with us yes it's an honor thank you guys thank right. you